No Film School's coverage of NAB is brought to you by Big Stock, videos and images for everyone. Color Grading Central, professional color grading with color finale. Shutterstock, where ideas take shape. Black Magic Design, amazing solutions for film, post-production, and television. Okay, so I'm here at the Airy booth with Michael, and uh, we're gonna be looking at the new Airy Alexa Mini. So tell me a little bit about why you decided to build a camera like this. Oh, the, uh, to build a small camera was a very common request from our customers, just because um, there are always situations where kind of our larger main unit cameras didn't work and people had to integrate footage from third-party cameras with Alexa footage and uh, that created all sorts of workflow and grading issues so um, DITs will be happy singing and dancing because there's now a new small camera that can be used for all these situations and the uh, workflow and image quality is going to be consistent for all the footage. So, so now we've got the same 3.4k uh, Alexa sensor that's in this camera now. Yes, and it's, it's it's the same LF3 sensor as all in in all in our camera, Alexa and Amira. It's just a newer version of it. So the the sensor has a readout speed of the Amira sensor, but it's a four by three sensor, so it has a larger sensor area, and the camera will support four by three and anamorphic in the future software update. Initially, the camera will be ProRes only, so when we ship this uh, in May, uh, it will be ProRes only, um, HD 2K, 3.2K and uh, 4K UHD in ProRes up to ProRes 444XQ. Different frame rates in uh, 2K and HD, it's going to be 200 max in uh, uh, 3.2K and uh, UHD, it's going to be uh, 60 max. Right. So now, you decided to do the upscale to 4K with this model, but the actual, the bigger Alexa doesn't do the upscale in the camera. Um, the new Alexa SXT right. that we're launching right. on the show uh, does do the upscale, uh, not only to the 4K UHD, but also to 4K DCI. Um, the previous version of the camera just wasn't beefy enough uh, okay. in terms of electronics. So it's a processing issue. It's a processing issue, okay. yes. It's a lot of data because kind of our image pipeline is works uncompressed. Only the end of the image pipe actually compresses the information. So it's just a lot of information actually rushing through the okay. camera. We try to have the camera as compact as possible, so um, from a constructive side there is a sensor carrier in the front of the camera uh, and the body of the camera pretty much hangs from the sensor carrier as well as the lens mount hangs from the sensor carrier. Um, on the lens mount we have on this lens mount. So this is the titanium uh, LDS lens mount that has an Elbus connector on it. Elbus is uh, the connector to connect C-Force motors. It's okay. a, a cooperation between C-Motion and us. Uh, we are launching a new motor, the C-Force Mini, um, which is a very small and lightweight but still fast and uh, with like a pretty good torque uh, motor which is ideal for primes and mid-size zooms. Um, so that titanium lens mount has the Elbus connector, but you can use all the Amira mounts as well. So you can okay. use the EF mount and the B4 mount, as well as the steel uh, LDS mount with the high Rosie connector, which may be useful if you want to use kind of a Caprio lens or something like that. Um, in front as well is a, this camera is rigged upside down, so it's a, <laughs> I'm looking in the wrong spot. Right. So. Um, the, uh, in front as well is a 5-pin limo, it, uh, it's the audio input, it, we support like a stereo line level uh, symmetric input, so it's a ground and two, uh, two audio pairs pretty much. It's, um, really, it's really more as reference audio than well, more than... Uh, we initially we thought we want a stretch, uh, scratch track re uh, only, but uh, it turned out to be so good that it really has the same quality as okay. kind of... So you, uh, could, you could potentially go out from a recorder or something and... Yes, and, yeah. you could just uh, put like a, a wireless receiver on yeah. it and, and record. 
So and there's a, um, an antenna for our lens control interface. There's a new rocket connector for the EVF. This, uh, like other than the Amira, kind of we use the Amira viewfinder. Um, we don't have an uh, HMI connector on the other side. There's this one is hot pluggable, so when the camera is running, you can connect and disconnect the viewfinder, no problem. You can use the camera without the viewfinder, but you would need a laptop or a tablet to set the camera up. Right. Uh, choose rosters, uh, let's say frame lines, um, codecs, right? Um, but when you're kind of shooting and you're, you, you have decided what you're going to shoot, then all the operational parameters like uh, frames per second, uh, white balance, shutter angle, uh, EI, the NDs are changeable from that interface. It's reflected in the SDI output, in the okay. OSD around. I think what's also interesting is, so everything is controllable wirelessly. So if you fly this uh, on a drone, uh, you can use the app. Yeah, you can use the app or you can use kind of our wide radio system. So the uh, WCU4 hand unit uh, will not only be able to um, like pull the focus with the uh, with the motors, but also be able to change all the operational parameters like frame rates and ease and stuff like that. Yeah. Now at the moment, it'll be only be your your control unit. Well, the, the C motion uh, hand oh, units right, okay. will work with the focus motors, but they will not be able to change the motors uh, change the operational parameters of the camera, um, but you can use them to focus. Yeah. Right. So the uh, the body right now is $45,000 uh, in the US, it's 32,500 euros uh, in, in Europe. Um, the entire package is is flexible, so kind of I think the complete package in the US will run for like $60,000, I think it depends.